So one of these things is not like the others and uh, I asked the question on Facebook if people could tell which one. It is a little bit of a trick question because one of these doesn't have a zipper and that's obvious but three of them have a similar construction like a welt pocket and one of them is actually just an inseam pocket and so the insulation of this one is dissimilar. In the others, there's a true welt pocket, a welt pocket with a zipper added, and a weltless welt pocket with a zipper added, which is the coral one, which is the one I'm going to show you today. And it illustrates how garment sewing can inform our construction for other items and uh, also for quilting and coming up with different ideas on how to make things with our quilted work that are interesting and have some of the nice detailing that garments have. And so we're going to do this and and show how I make this. And it reminded me so much of a welt pocket, which I'd done uh, making when I was a teenager, those um, corduroy, I've talked about it before, I think, the corduroy vest and slacks outfits were very popular and so I made welt pockets for corduroy jackets um, and this is very similar to that and so when I saw one in one of my purses you know store-bought purses I started putting them in my bags and this is stitched with black thread and it doesn't look perfect if you did it uh, with a little more attention to your tension and also with like a tan thread uh, it could look even sharper, although for the inside of a bag, I certainly don't think it's that bad. So I'm going to show how to do that real quick. So this, if you imagine, is the back lining of the bag. It would have another front unless it was a very tiny bag and was like this. And I've already put uh, interfacing fused onto here. And I've already fused interfacing onto all of these. These two are the same size and they're coordinating fabrics to this. I wish I tried to get more of this when I used to make pot holders out of this fabric. Um, and I always tried to use the dress, the line of dresses, and they sold really well. But anyway, I couldn't get more. It sold out of the whole country, I think, very quickly. But so I have these two pieces, and I'll put up on the screen the size, but you can do this any size you want. And so what I have here is uh, the two pieces of fabric that are going to be hidden underneath here and they're going to be the pocket and then we'll install a zipper to get into that pocket and so as you're making different things and you want to have an interior pocket like this you can use this method. One of the first things we need to do is choose a zipper. This is our fabric. I have a lot of these nice her zips which have a really big tab and they're really strong and durable. Uh, this is a more like a dress zipper. It's a little bit long. I think it looks lovely with it but it will tend to get dirty on an interior purse pocket. And this one would work because my pocket is cut uh, eight and a half and I could fit this in there but then I have to carefully navigate the metal on both ends of the zipper and it's almost a little easier to just navigate one end or even use the center of a zipper and not worry about either one depending on uh, what's going on. And so in my instance because of the color concerns I'm going to go ahead and just use this very wide zipper. Okay so I've added some interfacing and you know you can interface all the way to the edge. I tend to leave a little margin. I find that I get less on my ironing board and on my iron if I cut my interfacing a little bit smaller than my piece. So I'm going to go ahead and match this up at the top so that ultimately um, what's going to happen is this will get sewn to the top of the bag and so the, the pocket will be very firm firmly attached to the bag. It won't be hanging off even a reinforced piece of the bag, which all creates more stress. And stress means rips in the corner and stuff. 
I often have talked about how because I've sewn so many garments, I just love the way 5 8 looks. It's just a go-to width. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. And so if I do a, a hole that's 5 8 wide, I'm going to have plenty of zipper sides to sew this. And so that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to go too near the top. So I stayed an inch and a quarter away and draw this side. And so I'll go 5 8 away. I would do smaller. 3 8 or a half inch for one of these narrow zippers. Let's see. Half an inch would be probably okay. 3 8 and you might be crowding the zipper a little bit. But I think we're all very different and we have different tools and we measure differently and we just have a different way of things coming out and so if you do this a couple times I think you'll get a kind of a routine and a rhythm going and you'll be able to do this very nicely every time. Then draw, I want to keep my hole fairly good size so I'm going to stay about is that about an inch away from the ends? Yeah. Stay about an inch away from the ends. And so just draw this as quickly as you can in a reasonable manner. Okay, so then I have this box and so my zipper is going to fit right in here and uh, I can decide if I want the head of my zipper for some persuasive reason there or some persuasive reason there when it's in the closed position. I'm just, I've got black uh, Tech 40 thread. Um, it's like an all-purpose weight, about the same as like Coates all-purpose, um, which is, I think, on a different scale. I don't know if they use the Tech scale at this point. But all I'm going to do is, using a fairly small stitch, little less than a two. Um, I'm going to go all the way around this twice. I'm going to try to keep my corners nice and square by pivoting in the corners. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to attempt to just sew around this quickly twice. And I'll put links to any thing related that um, some folks might want to see what I'm using. As an Amazon associate, I earn for qualifying purchases. And I usually don't backstitch, I just overlap. So what I've done is I've used my junky scissors to cut down the center, and I cut really close into the four corners. And then I uh, like to do a little bit of a finger press here, because you want to get this nice and sharp at the iron. And it's just helpful on this hard surface to kind of finger press that over with your with your fingernail, um, unless you're doing a ton and then you probably want to use some kind of little tool, save, save the edges of your nails. Um, we're just going to take this over there and iron it like this. And you can decide for yourself if you like a little bit of this to flop over. I don't necessarily want it to do that with these same fabrics that I'm using. If I were using a like a bright red fabric, I might do that, or a white fabric, something that I really wanted to, to just sort of show around the edge, almost like a piping. But I'm going to press this. And you're going to get a little bit of this kind of puckering, especially on the inside, but it doesn't need to affect the look on the outside very much. And so we just want to give this a nice press and kind of work these corners and, you know, see if we're happy with it. Whatever you do, don't set it up where you have to sew through metal. Okay, try to keep my zipper in the center. You could baste or use tape. I'm going to do tiny little stitches to start. And as long as you're on the zipper, that's okay. The problem is if you're trying to be a little bit on the zipper. You need to either be on it or off it. 
with your foot. Okay, I'm going to go bigger stitch. At this corner, I need to kind of pop that up. Try to look in there and see what I'm doing. Black stitches on black pattern. Okay. I'm going to cut across here. Now, right here, I'm just going to kind of go back and forth a little bit and try to really kind of tack on this zipper a little. My needle's a 14 and almost always is. Uh, I should probably be using a 16 for some of this bag stuff, um, but I tend to use the 14 that, that I've always used. Okay, so I'm going to come down this side. My tension isn't perfect. Okay, now I need to sink in and get my zipper head out of the way. And it's kind of a tight squeeze. I'm really going to have to let's see if I pop up with my knee lift. Yeah. Using my knee lift, I can kind of get out of there. And then I'm going to go down to the end. Pop up here and use my post pin to pop up if I want. And kind of precisely come here. Now this might be a little harder going here because uh, I've got I'm going to drive over this metal. So while I'm here, I'm going to just kind of go back and forth a little bit. Then I'm going to come down and turn the corner. And then I'll end up with some tiny little stitches here. It won't really matter, but depending on what you're doing, it's a nice way to start and stop. You can uh, cut this zipper off and then what we want to do is stitch these two sides together and it's pretty easy to do. Here's a regular foot. Um, what I did was sew around here and if you position it like this and you can pin or clip or baste or do nothing. And then it's very easy to just sew around, turn the corner, and each part you pull back. And here my sizes didn't match up anymore because this kind of shrinks up around the zipper a bit. And that's fine. I just still attempted to go somewhat straight, turn the corner, and then go back and finish where I started. And so that's all you do to finish it up. And then when it's done, it's like this. And so in my situation, um, I'm not sure these are gonna go together yet because I just wanted to do this tutorial because I thought some people might have never done a weld pocket. And so this wouldn't be an obvious construction to them. And so this is a nice way to add a little pocket and it may go with this bag this part I would leave exposed and then to add more leather I have this piece of red leather.